Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and today we've been asked to do something that scares a whole lot of GED students. Today we've been asked to reduce each fraction to lowest terms. So I'm just going to warn you that the base skill that I use when reducing fractions is what's known as divisibility. I have a ton, a ton, a ton of divisibility tricks up on the website. Um, up on the YouTube channel or uh, for those of you guys who are in my class up on our Canvas site. So if you are not familiar with divisibility tricks, that's the key to really reducing fractions here. So this is what I noticed based on my divisibility tricks here. First one with A, a I noticed that both these numbers end in 0 or 5. And I know that when a number ends in 0 or 5, it has a factor of 5. Great news, I have found a common factor. All you do to reduce fractions is divide out every common factor. Every number that the numerator and, or I should say every factor that the numerator and the denominator have in common. So uh, what can 10 and 15 both divide by? They can both divide by 5. Now for those students who've never reduced fractions before, I just want to point out to you why this works. Notice what I'm dividing by. I'm dividing by 5 over 5. Another way to think about that 5 over 5 or 5 fifths is that's just one whole thing. I'm really just dividing by 1. 5 over 5 is just the number 1, uh, and sometimes I call it a fancy form of 1. It might be dressed up to look like something else, but if you have 5 fifths, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 fifths, you have one whole thing. So as we know, dividing by 1 doesn't do anything. And so even though I might be changing the appearance of this number, I'm not actually changing its value. So here we go. 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. And I come to a fraction 2 thirds, where the only thing they have in common is 1. The only thing that could divide both 2 and 3 evenly with no remainder is 1. 1, and I always say 1 and done. If you get to the point where anything, the only thing that divides them both is 1, you are done reducing your fraction. And that's how you know you're done. Not because it looks done, which is what well, most of my students use. Okay, so looking at 8 over 20. Now, if you are the kind of student who knows a bigger number, because you know your times tables, then you're actually going the faster way when you reduce fractions. So don't be worried that you need to go my slower way. But I use my divisibility trick so even my students who don't know their times tables uh, can reduce fractions. So what I see right here is 8 over 20. Both those numbers are even. And I know that all even numbers are divisible by 2. We have a common factor of Two, again, uh, when you have a common factor, you just divide it out of both these numbers. Now, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 20 divided by 2 is 10. Now, I hope you can see that these numbers are still both even. 4 and 10 are still both even, meaning I have another 2 in there. I'm going to pull out everything these numbers have in common. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now, let's think about this Whoa, sorry. Let's think about this fraction, 2 fifths. What factors do they have in common? Well, the only thing that divides 2 is 1 or 2. The only thing that divides 5 is 1 or 5. The only common factor they have is 1, and we said 1 and done. As soon as you get to the point where the only thing they have in common is 1, you are done reducing your fractions. So uh, 8 twentieths reduces uh, to the fraction 2 fifths. Now, 42 over 51 might look intimidating to you. A lot of students tell me that this cannot reduce. A really common misconception. And that's because most students only have memorized their final digit divisibility tricks. They only know the divisibility tricks that have to do with the end or what I call the butt of a number. This particular trick is a different kind of trick. It's known as a sum of digits trick. Don't go past a number without, or past a fraction without trying a sum of digits on both the uh, top and the bottom. A sum of digits will tell you if numbers are divisible by anything that has a 3 in it. So 3, 6, 9, things like that. So let's see. 42, we'll do a sum of digits. 
And again, we do that to check for our threes. So I'm going to sum the, ooh, I already wrote down my digits wrong. I'm going to sum the digits of 42. So I'm going to add the 4 and the 2 inside of 42. And I get 6. Now some I know about 6, 6 is on the 3 times tables. And then notice, again, 5 plus 1 gives me 6. Um, again, 6 is on the 3 times tables. Careful, this doesn't mean I can divide by 6. The sum of digits tricked tests for threes. So I found a common factor of three. Through my sum of digits trick, I learned that both of these numbers are divisible by three. And again, if you don't know this trick, go check out the full length video on it. It is beautiful. So I'm going to use short division or sight division to divide by three because I'm too lazy for long division. That's another video you should check out if you've never seen short division done. But 3 goes into 4 once, remainder 1, and 3 goes into 12 four times. And 3 goes into 5 once, remainder 2, and 3 goes into 21 seven times. And I end up with 14 and 17. Now let's think about 14 and 17. Do they have anything left in common? Well, 17's a prime number. The only things that can divide it are 1 and 17. 14 is not a prime, but it's only divisible by 1, 2, 7, and 14. The two things, the only thing they have in common is a 1, 1, and done. This is a reduced fraction. And reducing fractions is one of the hundreds of reasons that I could give you to really understand divisibility. Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED topic, be sure to drop them in the comments. I'll do my very best to answer them.